So where we left off uh, with the 20 horse, uh, Mercury, is uh, basically uh, we got everything working properly. It was peeing. It was idling good. The pull start cord was good. We're, everything seemed all right. But when we put it in gear, uh, it started to bog down and it would die. So this is where we've left off. And so basically what I'm going to do now is pull the uh, flywheel off. Um, take a look at the uh, uh, the high speed coil and see what the resistances are on that, uh, and also <clears throat> take off the uh, carburetor and go from there. Okay, it doesn't matter whether I disconnect these these wires or not, I get the same reading on the uh, low and high speed coils. Now the wire going to the, uh, the blue, this is actually the blue wire here that attaches to this other wire. Somebody had, re had t tapped in this blue wire into this, I don't know what color this is, but this is the blue side. And when you touch this, whether you disconnect that or not, I already did disconnect it. I get, and it's got to go to ground, so I got the ground connected to the chassis. I'm getting 6.03 thousand ohms. So that's 6,030 ohms because it's set on the uh, 20,000 uh, ohm scale. If I go to 2,000, it goes over limit. So I know that that is 6,030 ohms. Now, the uh, the spec on that is supposed to be between 5,200 and 7,000. And on the red lead, when you check it to ground, you're supposed to get, I believe, 180 to 340 ohms, according to the CDI um, website on their on their charts. This particular stator, and and this is supposed to be the low, or the, I'm sorry, the high speed coil for the red, and it's it's way over. So I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure if it's bad. I, I disconnected it. I got the exact same readings when I disconnected it, and I'm going to ground. Um, so I don't know. I'm I'm going to say that uh, at this point I'm I'm not sure. I know what I do know is that the carburetor was screwed up it had a blockage inside so i think that's what's causing my high speed problem that carburetor should have been affixed anyway but uh so i took that apart and um i'm gonna at this point say that the coils are okay uh under the under the flywheel for the stator both low and high speed at this point uh when i get the carburetor back on i'll fire it up if i have the same problem then i'll revisit the coil it might need to be swapped out. So uh, at this point, I really don't know. So stay tuned and uh, more to come. Okay, I just wanted to show everybody that the, uh, this is the choke wire and for some reason it was cut. And uh, so I've got, to, I've got to repair that and I'm just gonna put another gray wire, I'm gonna solder one, splice it and bring it up to the choke and that'll be done. Um, I tested it with my test light and it, it's got power when you turn the key on. Um, now I should have power from the choke to the ground when I hit the choke button. If that light goes on, then I should have power. Yep, there it is. So hopefully you can see that when I hit the choke button here. So that'll activate the choke solenoid. But unfortunately the, let me back up a little bit here so you can see it. You can see the way I think you can see it now. Choke activated, 
you every time I hit the button. So that should work. That should be uh, that should be good. Okay, so I just gotta solder a new line in, and that part is done, and put it back together. First thing I want to do maybe is take a look at the uh, bowl and the needle and seat, maybe the high-speed jet. I think the pump was working okay, the fuel pump itself, but uh, I may or may not go into that. I just want to make sure that the uh, high-speed jet is clean, because if that is plugged, that's why it won't, I won't get full throttle. And I can clean that relatively easily. Hopefully without too, too many parts needing to be replaced. So the bowl looks pretty clean. It's got a little bit of curl in there, but not bad. Reasonably good. That's okay. Um, In the club. Okay. If you look inside the throat or in that jet where it goes, I can show you. Maybe you can focus inside there, but there is definitely something blocking that orifice in there. Piece of plastic. Something's in there. I don't know if you can make that out, but I sure see it. Yeah, and I'm seeing why, because it wasn't lined up right, because whoever put that jet back in, now I see it. The Venturi has got a bend in it, and you can almost see there's a crack in the, in the arm back there. See a little gash, a little nick? It wasn't straight, and, it, and somebody put it in. When they put it in, they bent it, and they damaged it. So that little plastic Venturi has either got to be repaired or replaced. And this is what happened. And this thing was cockeyed in there because somebody, when they put the jet in, it was, it was blocking, so this was twisted, and they had bent this, so they didn't make sure that this was lined up properly. The fuel line you can see has got a wear in it right here. It's cracked. So this could be creating air leaks as well. Okay, just to give you kind of an overview, uh, I, I took apart the uh, carburetor completely, um, even the fuel pump. Now, the way that goes together, this sits over the top of the diaphragm like this. And then this is the gasket that sits on top of this gasket that lays on top um, of this like, no, oh, actually like this. And then this goes like this. Okay, so that's how that came apart. And then this, um, will end up sitting 
on top of this like that. So just so if I have a record of what I'm how I took it apart. So anyway, that's that. I'm going to because the diaphragm the diaphragm looks a little bit uh, stretched out. I'm going to order a kit for this. It doesn't look torn, but it definitely has some wear to it, and uh, that that'll help. It's the pump's efficiency, and and for this thing to run without any worries on the lake. So I'll. Uh, I'm just going to order a kit for that. I'm also going to order some new gaskets. There's a diaphragm kit for the fuel pump and gaskets, and then there's uh, another gasket set for the uh, for the carburetor itself for the bowl. This one here. Uh, there's a gasket here. Um, there's also another gasket here. This little round one that goes inside of here. And then for the bowl, the bowl screw, there's another gasket there. So um, I think everything else is okay. Everything else is, looks looks okay. I don't see any other part, any damage, other than the Venturi. This Venturi has got to be replaced. It it was cocked in there, blocking the flow of, uh, of fuel. And I think that's our problem. So I, I, I'm going to just go with this. Rebuild the carburetor, put it back together, and see if we can't get this thing to run full throttle. If I have a problem after that, then I'll go after the uh, after the flywheel and, and maybe the uh, high speed uh, um, the uh, high speed uh, coil. But I don't think it's the coil. I think it's this. And uh, you know, seeing the blockage that I seen, I'm going to soak this overnight, get it nice and clean, spray it out with carb cleaner and blow all the holes and orifices out of it, get it nice and clean, and then reassemble and we'll see what we got. So anyway, stay tuned for the reassembly, cleaning and reassembly, and uh, we'll okay. go from there. I just uh, got my my uh, parts in for the 20 horsepower Merc. Um, these are the carburetor gaskets, uh, and this is the fuel pump gaskets. Now, some of those gaskets overlap. They have some of them in here that belong to the fuel pump, but but they don't, in, in this kit, they do not have the diaphragm. So you have to buy this kit in order to get the diaphragm. And then, and then they duplicate a bunch of other gaskets. But anyway, they've got other carburetor type gaskets in here too. You got the gasket for the, uh, the, the fuel pump on the screen that goes, uh, attaches to, the, to this section here, here on the uh, carburetor. But uh, anyway, uh, it's got everything it needs. Uh, the, you know, you can see the bowl pump uh, gasket or the, the bowl uh, to the carburetor gasket. Um, anyway, just wanted to show you this. And also, this was, uh, geez, this sucker was 20 bucks at least. 20, some, 20 and some change. Um, expensive part. Uh, this is what broke inside or got a, a notch on it. I don't know if the person put it in improperly, maybe backwards. And it, and it got stressed and cracked, but uh, you can see there's a taper to that. And it's got to go in a certain way, and if somebody had rebuilt this carburetor, put it in wrong, it would offset that Venturi uh, off-center and cause it to cause problems at full throttle, I believe. So this is what I'm thinking is the problem. That's what we're going to put back. We're going to rebuild the pump and put the new gaskets in for the carburetor and then reinstall. So okay, stay I just wanted to show you that uh, I'm using this 1965 to 89 repair manual from Sealock. Uh, it's uh, all two strokes, one and two cylinder, two to 40 horsepower. And in the, in the manual for this carburetor, I'm working on carburetor B, and it talks about this Venturi, uh, where are you? Uh, la, 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 where are you? Oh, here. The Venturi, it goes in a certain way. Little points on, on the top have to be up. Otherwise, when it goes in, the uh, butterfly, if, if you reverse that, it won't, it'll, it'll, this will go together, but then the, uh, the shutter for the butterfly, um, the throttle shutter, for the, actually, I think that's the choke portion of it. Uh, here, this this one here, this two-piece one, um, will not close properly. So you gotta make sure that goes in, in right. 
Actually, no, it's the, it's this one. This one, not this one. It's this uh, throttle shutter. Anyway, as that actuates in the throat, if this thing isn't in properly, this will hit it. And um, it'll cause other issues. I mean, it just won't operate properly. So anyway, but I had to replace it. But here in the book, it says, do not attempt to remove the main nozzle, even though it has a screwdriver slot. The Boost Venturi is very difficult to install if the main nozzle has been removed. And they're right about that. I mean, basically, you can see it. Uh, I got to turn. I wanted to turn the, uh, the the light on here. You can see the plastic Venturi down there. It's in there now. But in order for me to get that in there, I had to take those two screws out, slip this shutter out, and uh, it was easier to I just use some needle nose pliers and just kind of go in sideways with it. Um, here's the old one. I use some needle nose pliers and with the points sticking up, because you want this flat part down inside the two notches down in there, you go in and, it, and you rotate it like this and you just drop it in. It's not that difficult, really. They, talk, they tell, say in the manual, don't remove it. It's too hard to, to mess with, but um, it went in okay. I had no really, I mean, it took me a little while to figure it out, but my best advice is to take out this these two screws and, and this shutter just slips right out of there and it gives you more room to, to, to maneuver. Very simple. So it goes back right in, you know, you just slip it back in, tighten those screws down and you're back in business. So I just wanted to show you that little uh, detail. So keep watching. We'll uh, get this thing back together and get it back on the boat or on the motor. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned.